Hey guys, AJ with Relentless Racing. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm talking about how the B-Series transmission works and why mine isn't going into reverse. Enjoy the video. So this is a B-Series transmission. This is actually a Type R. This is a 97 spec, so it does have an LSD in it. It's a 4.4. Anyhow, let me start off with the basics of a transmission. This right here is actually the main shaft and this is what's called the counter shaft over here. And I'll break this down a little bit more, but let me go over some of the gears first. This down here is first gear. This is actually first gear right here. Here's second gear, this one right here. Here is third, this guy right here. Here's fourth, and here's fifth. And reverse is kind of on the back side over here. There's a little idler gear that goes on the back and it pretty much just reverses first gear is what it does. The way the thing works is, if I were to spin the shaft right now, if you're in neutral, the gears don't rotate. And so to prove this to you guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift part of the transmission so I can reach my hand under, and I'm going to start rotating the main shaft. Now the shaft is rotating, and I could hold on to the gears, and they won't move. And the reason why is because these gears, they're not attached to the shafts and how they eventually attach to the shafts is with the synchro assemblies. So this is what's called a sleeve, and I'll break down this down a little bit later. Let's say that you wanted to go from neutral into first gear. Your shift fork, which is this guy right here, which is actually attached to the sleeves, it'll attach kind of like this, and then you'll actuate them, moving them up and down. So if I want to go into first gear, I will shift in first gear, and then, this thing moves down. Now, this sleeve transfers torque from the gear to the sleeve to the hub, and then it'll come on out. And then if you wanna go into second gear, you'll actually move the shifter again, and this thing will come up. Now it's all in neutral. When we wanna go into third, it goes down here. Into fourth, it goes up. Now it's in fourth gear. Now fourth gear is actually attached to the shaft. And then as it comes down, it's back in neutral. So here's the problem area on my transmission. The problem area on my transmission is it'll go into fifth gear, but it won't go into reverse. Reverse, this sleeve needs to move upwards and it won't move upwards. And it's because the sleeve is damaged. So let me explain to you again, how the torque gets transmitted through everything. The main shaft, which is down in this pocket down in here, the power comes from the motor. It'll attach it to the main shaft. And again, if the main shaft is spinning and all of these gears are neutral, obviously the diff or the axles isn't gonna move. And that's the reason why is because again, these gears aren't attached to the shaft until you move the synchro assembly. So let me take this all apart real quick and I'll show you guys. Okay, so let's just put this thing back up in here. So now we're just dealing with the main shaft and let me show you what ha happens. This is an angular ball bearing right here. You just take that thing off. And then it's a small stop ring, and the stop ring has these little detents in it to stop it from rotating around, and they fit into it just like that. And this thing just comes right out here, and it's this is shaped as, as a taper. It's actually called a um, taper ring. And then that fits on a needle ball bearing. You can see it right there. And this is just a distance collar see how all that fits just like that and this is actually the first part of the synchro so when there is an a synchro assembly there's a couple different things that are in there so let me take all these guys out this is what the synchro assembly really is there's actually a synchro spring and then there's a synchro ring and there's two of these on each side of it. So here's the other set. Again, synchro spring, synchro ring, and then those two goes on the outside. And then this is a sleeve and a hub. That's a sleeve and a hub. And so what happens is, if you look, the, sl the hub is actually spline. And so when it's splined, that's what transfers all the power. So we'll go from the main shaft, the motor will be turning, and then this guy will be turning because it's attached to the shaft via a spline. 
And then when you use the sleeve, the sleeve will actually connect that power either to reverse when it goes up or when it goes down, it'll go into fifth gear. And so that's how that works. So you just put this guy on here like this. And then again, this is the synchro ring, the synchro spring. Put these two together, drop that right on here. And then the hub fits a particular way. So the hub is different right here. And then right here, you can see that this is deeper right here. And it's also tapered. And there's also these protrusions right in here, these holes rather. And this synchro ring fits in there. See the little protrusion that's right there? It goes right in there. And that's how we know it fits. So we'll put that like that. And then this piece right here that's tapered has to face downwards because that's the way it's supposed to fit. And then again, fit the little synchro ring protrusion into the hole that's in the hub. Boop. Now it fits right there. The sleeve, this is the one that gets damaged all the time. So this is what's damaged on mine. And I'll point it out to you guys. So notice these guys are real sharp right here. That's the way they're supposed to look. If you flip this thing over, you could see where it's damaged. These guys aren't pointy at all. Not at all. And so that's why it won't go on to reverse. It'll go into fifth, but it won't go into reverse. So it'll slide down this way, but it can't go across this way because these are damaged right there. And this is a common problem. If you can't get your shifter into a particular gear, chances are it's this sleeve right here. So let me explain to you how the sleeve goes on. The sleeve is really fitted to the hub. The hub has these weird little guys right here. Right here on every one of these faces, there are two gears that are cut deeper. You can see those two right there. And then as I rotate around, there are two right there that are cut a little deeper. This one and this one. And then again, rotate around. This one and this one are deeper. So the only way that the sleeve will fit in there is if you put it in there properly. Because these guys have two teeth that are a little bit larger on each one. So let me see if I can identify them right. There they are right there. There's two right here. You can see that they're a little bit taller. They have a little section right here, a little taller. This one's a little taller as well. So you gotta make sure you put that in the correct way. And obviously the orientation, whether it goes on this way or if it goes on this way is important. And so the factory service manual or the Bible as I call it, actually calls out which way that's supposed to go. There it is. There it goes. So now it'll actually grab fifth gear. There it goes. Now we'll just put on, <laughs> do it all again. It's a good way to learn, I guess. Put this section on here. Put the ring on, and then right there. And then this guy, that's the tapered ring. Distance collar. Needle ball bearing. Stop a ring. And angular ball bearing. If the motor is turning, this shaft will be turning, but notice I can grab the gears and hold them still because they're not attached. The gears will not be attached until the sleeve is actually engaged over the gear like that. Now, fifth gear is locked, but look, I can still rotate and fourth gear is not attached at all. But fifth gear is, but once I release the sleeve, fifth gear can rotate on its own. See? All right, and that's pretty much the basics of a transmission. And then again, my sleeve is damaged, and so I'm gonna take all this part, review all of these bearings, and make sure everything is cool. Gotta check all these bearings. I'll probably end up replacing all these bearings because it's just cheap insurance. You don't wanna go through here and then not have that go through there and have a bad bearing and then have to go in here again. All you had to do was just switch out these bearings. There's really only four bearings in here. There's one on the top of the main shaft, one at the bottom of the main shaft, and then the same thing for the counter shaft. 
There are also two other bearings in the diff, which is over, on, over here. So to pull the diff out, you just kind of grab it out like this. And you can see the diff and there's two bearings on it. Taper bearings, one on each side. And then uh, this is the final drive right here, that, right around this guy right here. The bearings are about 70 bucks a piece. Okay, you don't have to buy them from Honda. As long as you take down the numbers that are on the bearings, you can see the numbers that are on the bearings. You just pop this guy off. The numbers are actually on the bearings, but until you open this thing up, <laughs> you won't know what that number is. This one is a particular bearing, is an NTN bearing. You can see it right here, the NTN, and then there's a part number right there, so you can try and do those. Transmissions are super simple, and if you ever wanted to tackle this, it's actually pretty, uh, not too bad. So I think I'm gonna replace, end up replacing all of these synchro assemblies. I'll replace the fifth reverse one, the third, fourth, synchro assembly over here on the counter shaft i'll replace the first second right there as well i'm aware of the fake bearings but if you go to a reputable bearing company you can get these bearings and they will be real ntn bearings but you can't buy them i wouldn't buy them off of ebay i would only go to like a reputable actual bearing company what i'm going to do is i'm going to take out all these bearings write down all the numbers and then i'll order them up i'm going to go with oem the reason i'm going to go with oem because you can't beat the oem quality and not only the quality, but the tolerances of these synchro assemblies are very, very important. I feel that the tolerancing is a lot tighter on the OEM synchro assemblies. So we're talking about these guys right here. And what's interesting is these aren't carbon coated from the factory, but these guys pretty much, you know, these rings wear out a little bit. Sometimes these guys crack and you get a little bit of wearing with the insides of the synchro ring right here. On the S2000, these are actually carbon deposited. I'm a big OEM fan when it comes to these particular items. Obviously other items I kind of pick and choose as to what I go with. And then again, make sure when you stick this thing in here that these guys fit into the pockets that are inside the hub. Yeah, here are the little houses. These aren't damaged actually. These actually look really good. And so these actually help the sleeve go over the hub. It allows it to slide easier along the hub. So you can see the little teeth, they kind of match. And these guys kind of go in there kind of like that. You can see them, let me grab my little pointer stick. They kind of fit inside these guys to allow them to slide over them and that's kind of how they fit boom just like that so you can imagine that if the other side is damaged the synchro ring will not go down through them sometimes it does oh this one does still even though it's damaged it still does it but it won't go over the actual bearing so here's the bearing right here it won't go over the bearing part so this sleeve has got a go on to this guy like that but sometimes it won't fit because they're damaged this one is the good side right there see how nice and pointy they are and then also when I run my finger outwards this way I don't feel anything on a damaged side you'll feel it catch right here you feel it catching these are really bad right here you feel it catch right there and then you can see that these are, are completely run, or kind of worn down, like right there. As opposed to, look how pointy these guys are. Pointy, pointy, pointy. Pointy, pointy is good. Rounded, bad. This is the rounded side right there. This is what you hear when you're grinding. It's this guy, you're just running these things down is what's happening. And eventually you run them down so much you won't be able to shift into whatever gear it is that keeps grinding. So when I first got my car, it was having trouble going into reverse a little bit. And I knew it was gonna let loose. I mean, the first race back in January, it was having issues. It was having issues going in and coming out of it. And so the second race came on, the third one, and finally at the, at the night race, it finally let loose. And the guys actually, actually Johnny, uh, CTR Johnny had to push me backwards so that way I can get on track. But uh, yeah, it's usually the sleeve that's the problem for that thing. And that's what you're here grinding right there. 
Anyhow, guys, uh, I guess I'll show this how it goes together one more time. I'm gonna put this gear back on. You can see a needle bearing there. This is another distance collar. And this is fifth gear. Put that guy on. Now I'm gonna put the synchro, the synchro ring, the synchro spring, snaps on right there and then I want to make sure that I put the hub on properly this time so let's see it's got to go because of the tapered edge it has to fit down into here like that and make sure that this thing moves down yeah there it is and then that has to fit like right there there we go now it fits properly and you can see the sleeve going over the synchro and then it catches the gear right here, and then that sleeve, this sleeve right here, transfers the power that's coming off of the shaft from this hub to the sleeve to the gear, and this gear takes it to the counter shaft, and then it takes it out to the diff. So then we'll put the spacer on and the needle bearing, and then we'll put on the other synchro assembly. The other synchro assembly, again, this protrusion has to go in the hole that's in the hub, just like that, and then the tapered taper ring, the stop ring, put the detents in the correct location of the ring so it fits right in there. Remember this little portion points down in this orientation and then these numbers have to point up in this orientation. And then Honda actually talks about in the book, they look at the side of it, the cross section of it, so this part versus like a solid part. And then when you push this thing on, just make sure you put it on concentric and it'll slide right on. If it's not concentric, it won't. That was pretty simple, right? Well, I highly recommend you take apart a B-Series transmission. One, to learn, and two, it's really simple. It's a lot easier to rebuild a transmission than it is to build a motor. All you really need is a little patience and of course, the OE service manual. This is AJ with Relentless Racing. Thanks again for watching. Stay relentless and I'll see you on the track.